All right, in our next example here, we're going to take a look at how to separate the logic of moving our cube around in the scene and separate it from the actual input. And we're going to use Mechanim to do this. So just to give a quick example here, we'll start it up. And of course, as I use the WASDA keys, I can move my cube around. Now we've all written a script similar to this at some point in time. Let's go ahead and we'll take a look at it. And of course the magic happens down here in the update where we just go ahead, we get the position from the transform and we're just gonna append onto that a certain amount of distance, a vector new vector three, according to what I've hard coded in here for our input. The horizontal, the vertical, we're gonna speed it up again and then make sure that it's not dependent on frame rate, make sure it uses time instead. And then we just go ahead and reassign it back into our transform. And this is great. It's a very simple example, so it's really only one line of code. But I want to be able to abstract out the input and not have to worry about having all the different logic built into the script itself. I want to let Mechanim handle that. So let's take a look to see how we can do it. So I'm going to come back into the scene. Let's get rid of our cube. I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new one. Now let's, let's, let's do a sphere. And I want to have two windows open here. I want the animation window and I want the animator window. Now keep in mind that the animator window is what they call mechanism. And to get those, you can come up to the window option here, the animation window and the animator window. So with the cube, or sorry, the sphere now <laughs> selected, I'm going to hit create. And it's going to ask me where I want to save this new animation. So the first one I'm going to make is idle. If I spell it right. And this is just going to be the idle animation for the cube where it's not moving at all. It only has to be one frame. I'm not going to set up any folders because this is such a small example. So here we go. I went ahead and created it. We noticed we have the animation down here for it. And we've got a animator controller as well. If we double click that, it opens up into Mechanism here. And it shows our idle animation already, which we have here. Now, as you start building up more and more animations, you're probably going to want to go ahead and create a folder for them, but we're only going to have three for this. So let's go back to the scene view. And we're going to go ahead and work on this idle animation. So I'm going to add a property to this. We've played with the animator before, or sorry, the animation window before, so none of this should be too new. And we're going to go ahead and add the position. And we start off with two frames here. We can go ahead and extend this. And we have the position for X, Y, and Z, which is right here up in the inspector. And we have two frames, one where we start and one where we stop. It's one second long. For the idle animation for this, I only need one, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it. I'm gonna go ahead and select that first one. I just wanna make sure it's at zero, zero, zero. Now it's in record mode, and you can tell because it's, the color has changed here. If you're using the pro skin or the dark skin, whatever you wanna call it, It'll gray a bit. If you're using the um, the personal version or the gray version, it'll darken. But you can always tell because you'll get red on the properties that you can edit. So I'm not gonna do anything. I just wanna make sure it's at zero, zero, zero. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. And I'll save it. Oh, this is saving my scene. And just to be careful, uh, I'm gonna call it, uh, I don't know. Let's just call it scene. Just in case something happens, you should always save your scene. Let's jump back into the animator. We select the idle. And I just want to actually look at the animation itself. All right. So I want to generate room motion. It doesn't really matter for the idle because it's not moving. But all the other ones I'm going to be using this for. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to leave everything there. That all looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on. Well, we don't really need foot IK. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it on because it's just part of my workflow, I always do it. So we'll go ahead and put that on. Animation set, everything's great. We're not transitioning to anything. If we went ahead and started it, uh, nothing's gonna be all that exciting. Let's go ahead and see this. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. Let's go ahead and add maybe a little bit of a bounce to this. So I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna grab the sphere, make sure it's selected. I'm gonna stick with the idle. Maybe add about cord. I want to drag it out a bit to maybe maybe half a second. And I'm gonna lift it up at point one on Y. 
And then at uh, one second, I'm going to go ahead and put it back down. Of course, if we stop that and we we'll let it go, now we get this little bit of a bounce to it. So we can tell the idle animation is playing. Great. Normally, I just leave it as idle as not moving, but for the demonstration purposes, we'll go ahead and add a little bounce. Now, let's go ahead and have it move to the positive on X, which is going to be to our right. And that's denoted with this little arrow here. So we'll come over to where it says idle. We're going to create a new animation clip. And I'm just going to call it Move X. And we see that it shows up here. And like before, we're going to go ahead, pick what we want to animate, which is the position. And I'm going to leave all my clips at one second. You can go ahead and adjust these to get the exact feel that you're looking for. For demonstration purposes, and try to make this a little quicker, I'm just sticking with zeros, or sorry, one second clips. So we'll go ahead, start it off at zero, zero, zero. And at one, we're going to move a total of, well, one would probably be too little. Let's move it three units to the right on every second. That might not be enough. It might be too much. We can come in and adjust it later. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. I'm going to select the actual animation clip. And again, I want to loop pose and generate root motion so that the actual animation moves my guy. And I do have loop pose here. I'm going to go ahead and loop pose here as well. We'll come back into the animator. All right, we have it there. So let's go ahead and make a transition up to the move X and make a transition back down. All right, so we'll go ahead. I don't want to exit time on either of these. Uh, we're going to need a parameter to move this. So we'll make a float. I'm just going to call it X. I'm, while I'm here, I'm going to make the next one for Z. And for this, so we'll say, go ahead. When X is greater than 0.1, and we'll come back to idle when X is less than 0.1. We'll go ahead, we'll save that off. And let's go ahead and take a quick look at it here now. So it's bouncing away idle. Let's go into the scene view, it's a little bit bigger. And as I, oops, we didn't make an animation clip for it. Or we didn't make an input for it. So let's take the animator. Well, we'll just go ahead. We'll just start it down here. Now, as the X value changes, it goes into move X, but it's not moving. I forgot to go ahead and uh, select the sphere. And when we created that first animation clip, it added the animator component for us. And we're going to need to go ahead and select this apply root motion as it tells us right here. Now, when we start it, And again, I have not put input in there. We've got to make an input script. But let's go ahead, we'll do one. And that's fine. That's a, that's a speed I can live with. Then of course, once it goes back down to zero, it goes back to idle. Now let's go ahead and make one for Z, and then we'll go ahead and make that input script. So with it selected, I'm going to come down here. We'll create a new clip. This is going to be called, you guessed it, Move Z. And just like before, we're going to go ahead, animate the position, grab Z. So I'm going to make sure that the first one, Z is zero. Well, everything is zero. And on this, the second one, which is the last one we're going to be using, I believe is three that we were using. Turn off record, come over to the clip, loop it, generate root motion. And I'm actually going to go ahead and make a blend tree over here instead of having everything looped together. So we'll create a brand new one here. Create a uh, blend tree. And I want to make it as the default. And we'll, uh, we'll make it a 2D blend tree, simple 2D directional. And I'm going to need five motions. I find it easier this way. And I'll take idle. We'll drag it right here. It's going to be at zero, zero. So parameter X is going to be X. Parameter Y is going to be Z. Now we've dealt with this before, so this shouldn't be too new. So a quick overview for those who have not dealt with it. Uh, this allows us to move things around on a an X, Y graph. Or in the case of the game world, it's going to be X and Z. And basically just 
what weight we have the animation going to be playing on. So idle in the middle. We'll go move X up here, move X down here. And this is going to be when X is at full value at one, at full value negative, which is negative one. Now this animation to play moving it to the left, I want it to play backwards. So we'll set the time parameter to negative one. And we're going to do the exact same thing for Z. Put those in, except this time we're going to edit the position Y, which is tied to this parameter. So that will be to forward. This will be backwards. And of course, the backwards one, we want to play backwards. And that should be it. Let's go ahead and test this out. So we'll go ahead, we'll hit play. Our sphere is selected. Let's go X. Yeah, it's moving, right? Then we should be able to go forward and backwards. And they blend between them. Now let's actually go ahead and uh, create an input script and show how, well, here, here we have the logic. Now let's go make the input script. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new C Sharp script and I'm just gonna call it move sphere. Open that up. And I always get rid of all this stuff out the start. And we're gonna need a reference to our animator, which I will call anim in awake. I'm gonna go ahead and get, well, get that reference. Uh, so let's get component, the component we want, which is the animator. Where are you? There you are. Then in the update, and again, you just separate all of your input doing it this way. We can go ahead and say anim dot set float. The float value we want to set, in this case, we'll work with X first. And here's where we put the input in. So we're going to say input dot get axis. The axis we want will be horizontal. And we'll do the exact same thing for our Z parameter. And this time around, we're gonna use the vertical one. Now you can actually go ahead and rename those in the input manager if you want to make more sense. Uh, but that's it. All we gotta do is get the reference to the animator, just like we did with the transform, and go ahead and adjust these parameters. So let's go back in, we're gonna grab our sphere. We'll drag this new script on. And of course we could make it require uh, an animator just to make sure it's there, but let's go ahead and we'll try this out. There it is, idle. Now we can actually move, that actually does feel a little slow. But here we go, it works the exact same way that the cube did. If we were to actually turn the cube back on, the cube's gonna move faster. Uh, we could, whoops, we could go ahead and play with these speeds down here if we really wanted to. But there we go. We've successfully separated the movement logic from the input using mechanism and using animation curves. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.